Hi, it's Mike, WB4HUC. And today I wanted to talk about WSJTX and using it with multiple radios. So I have two radios. I have my Tentec Omni 7 and I have my ICOM IC7300. So what I did was I created two instances of WSJTX. This one, if you follow the cursor, this one that had been labeled WSJTX Omni 7 until I changed the name of the, the label. And then WSJTX IC7300 because the audio settings are different for each radio and the radio settings, of course, are different for each radio. So each radio is on a different serial port um, and it has to be, you know, WSJTX has to know which radio it is. And then the audio settings, uh, the Omni 7 uses an external Signalink USB sound card and the IC7300 uses its internal sound card. So just briefly, uh, if we go here, and so this one's for the Omni 7, and you can see according to okay so we're on 17 meters on the omni 7 and the sdr pan adapter here shows you there's the ft8 frequency for uh, 17 meters and if we look at the settings we can see that for this instance of WSJTX, the radio is the Kenwood TS480. The reason that um, we have to specify a Kenwood radio when we're using the Pegasus Plus software is that when you set up virtual serial ports to talk to other pieces of software, uh, the Pegasus Plus uh, Omni 7 control software uses the Kenwood command set. So you have to tell that other software you're using a Kenwood radio. So in the case of WSJTX, we've told it we're using a Kenwood TS480. We're on COM14, which is one half of a virtual serial port pair. The other uh, port in the pair is uh, COM24. And then we set everything up uh, like we need it to be for this uh, connection. You do a test and you get green. So, and then the audio settings is the external uh, sound card, the Signalink USB. And this is the device name for the Signalink USB. I simply renamed it and called it Tentec Digital uh, to tell it apart from uh, the ICOM device. So anyway, we have uh, a radio setting and an audio setting. So, uh, and then it's the same thing for this one that says WSJTX IC7300. So if we start that one up, then we can see we're on uh, 20 meters here. And if we switch the radio over, if we switch the IC7300 over to 20 meters, uh, you can see here in the uh, pan adapter display for the ICOM that we've got signals coming in and you can see up here in the uh, display for WSJTX we have signals coming in and you can see the signal strength here and as soon as this thing finishes uh, it'll show some decoding. So two instances of the software for two different radios. Well I thought there might be another way and I read something here we go we're decoding signals now. I thought there might be a, a, another way, and I've seen this thing that says configurations uh, up here, and I thought that might be a way to specify both radios in one instance of WSJTX, and it turns out you can do that. So I'm going to stop this. Uh, I'm going to go back to the Omni 7, again, which is on 17 meters, and uh, so this, is, uh, this video is to talk about setting up multiple radios in one instance of WSJTX. And I've already done that with this instance. That's why I renamed it. So we'll go back to it. And we'll monitor. I don't know why, but when uh, it talks to the Omni 7, it always 
uh, adds 60 hertz to the frequency. I don't know why. Uh, whoops, that's not right. There we go. So now you can see signals coming in, and they'll be decoded as soon as the as soon as it finishes. So how do you set up multiple configurations? Well, before the only configuration was this one, and it was named default. And so to add a new configuration, you just say clone. And then the next time you look at configurations, you'll have a copy, which you can rename. So I renamed the original default configuration to Omni 7. Uh, and I can rename this one Omni 7. Uh, configuration 2, for instance. I'm not going to keep it, so it doesn't matter what I call it. But once you do that, once you make that uh, configuration, now you can switch to. You can switch to. So if I switch to this one, nothing's going to change because it's exactly like the one we're already using. But I'll switch to it just to show you what that looks like. And nothing changed. Everything's the same. So, uh, but just to show you that you can change the configurations and it'll work. So let's go to the 7300 and uh, I'll show you that. So if we, we'll give this time to decode. Okay. So I'm going to switch the antenna back to the 7300. You'll see this pen adapter comes up. Again, we're on 20 meters. So if I go back up here, and I say configurations, and I go to 7300, switch to. That's interesting. It should have brought it over here, I thought. Well, okay. So let me fool with this for just a minute. Okay, so you can see we're on 20 meters here. Uh, we're on 20 meters. You can see the signals in the pan adapter, and then you can see the signals in the, the pan adapter up here. And when it gets done, it'll show what it's decoded. So we have two configurations within one instance of WSJTX. And uh, the way you create a new one is, like I said, you pick one and then you clone it, which is what we did down here. Well, I'm going to delete this one because we don't need it anymore. So, so I, I cloned the one for Omni 7 and I named it IC7300. And once you switch to it, uh, then you can go through the other settings and make them whatever you need them to be. So if we go, uh, we're on the, we're on the 7300 configuration. So if we do file settings, radio 7300, COM 13, everything's set up. We do a test cat, we get green. Audio is the internal sound card on the 7300. So that's all correct. And then if we go back to the Omni 7, say switch to, we're back on 17 meters. We're back on 17 meters. And if I switch the coax switch to put the radio in line, you see the pen adapter came up. We can do monitor. And while we're waiting on that, we can look at settings. And the radio is now, we're back to their Kenwood radio. Test cat, we're green. Whoops. Audio, we're back to our 
uh, SignalLink sound card. So the idea here is that you can create multiple configurations for multiple radios, set the radio and audio and anything else you need uh, up the way it needs to be for that radio, and away you go. So um, one uh, thing I'll mention is about the log file. So if I start this instance, you'll see that it uses a log file that's in this WSJTX IC7300 folder. And the Omni 7 version uses uh, a log file that's in this WSJTX Omni 7 folder. And the reason for that is this instance, or I'm sorry, this configuration for WSJTX started out as the Omni 7. So uh, we're using the Omni 7 log file. So I had two log files for two different log files for each instance. I probably could have used the same log file for both instances. If I can do that, I didn't. But now it doesn't matter which configuration I use. It's going to go into this WSJTX Omni 7 log file. So it doesn't matter which radio I make contacts on, all the contacts go to the same log file. So if I switch back uh, to 7300, and then if I look at the log directory, now we're going to see we're still using the log file that was in this WSJTX Omni 7 directory. So I'm going to be using the same log file now for either configuration where when I had two separate instances of the software, one instance of the software used one log file, the other instance of the software used the other log file. So uh, that's been resolved as well. And I like that. So now it doesn't matter which radio I use, all the contacts go into the same log file, which just keeps everything together. So that's it. Uh, I just, again, like I said, I just wanted to talk about uh, multiple configurations within one instance of WSJTX to handle multiple radios. Turned out not to be very difficult at all to set all that up. One thing I will mention though, an additional thing I'll mention is you notice I'm using radio control software here. I'm using uh, the Win4 ICOM suite software for the 7300. I'm using the Pegasus Plus software for the Omni 7. You don't have to do that. If the only thing you wanted to run was WSJTX, you wouldn't need this software. But using the software gives you access to multiple virtual serial ports like we uh, showed you. So the Win4 ICOM suite software has ex can can use multiple virtual serial ports and so can the Pegasus Plus. So that's what we're doing here. Um, it's just using the software to get access to the uh, virtual serial ports. We don't need it for radio control. So I can actually minimize this thing because I don't need it once I'm set up. So even though I minimize the software, I can go back to the ICOM and you can see signals in the 20 meter pen adapter display, or I can go back to the Omni 7 and you can see signals in the 17 meter uh, pen adapter display. So you don't really need the software to be visible once it's set up and working. You can uh, minimize it and save some screen space. Uh, I'm only using the radio control software uh, to get access to those virtual serial ports. So there you go. Um, I think that's uh, really all there is to say about this. So I'm going to end the video now. But as always, I hope you find it useful. And thank you for watching.